cornerback. And we're talking about the cornerback position, right? And the question was, obviously, what are we doing with this, this 25th pick? And does it make sense to grab a corner, right? And I, and I keep thinking, I'm like, yeah, it does make sense to grab a corner. It really does because we let Levi Wallace walk. We haven't added anybody to the squad. So it only makes sense to you draft a corner, right? But my biggest beef has been, do you just draft a corner just to draft a corner just because you filled or you checked the box that you drafted a corner? Or do you draft a corner that has, that has high value enough that does the job, right? So then I was like, okay, hold on a second. Let me look at the top 32 corners in the game. According to PFF, how they ranked them, right? I looked at all of them. And I'm like, where were they drafted, right? We've got the 32 best corners in the game. Okay, what round were they drafted? Because a lot of times folks say, well, you know, the best running backs are usually taken in the second and third and they have really good success, especially in the second round. I totally agree. There's a lot of second rounders that you're like, shoot, that, that boy's killing the game right now, even later sometimes. Same for corners, right? So I thought. So I'm, I'm going through it. And th these are the things, right, that you got to do for yourself to kind of like educate yourself on. Okay, so like statistically, does it make sense to do that move, right? And obviously evaluators makes a point. You, you've got to be a good evaluator to make sure that you're making – you took that guy, but you better make sure that you, you get your return on investment, if you, especially if you take him in the first round. So I'm looking at all 32, 32 uh, corners, and 85 to 90% of the corners that I ran through, from Jalen Ramsey to freaking, you know what I'm saying? Like, you name it. I have the list upstairs. I didn't bring it down. But anyway, there were like five to maybe seven corners that were taking taken in the fifth some were undrafted like richard sherman fifth jc jackson undrafted you feel me but there weren't many a lot of these corners were picked in the first round so i'm like okay are any of these corners that are in this draft worthy of first round and when i say first round i'm talking about where we pick 25th right i mean hell we picked up trey white with the 27th pick so there's a very big possibility that corner might be the right the route we take but here's where i'm like maybe we don't because just a year ago brandon bean was talking about how excited he was about dane jackson right and funny enough it was it was a podcast with collinsworth and richard sherman and he was like if you guys aren't realizing we have a budding star that's gonna be i mean i don't i'm paraphrasing here but we have a, a guy that's gonna be gonna be he's gonna be a budding star soon and and we're very excited about him, and that's Dane Jackson, right? And they like Dane Jackson. Problem is, would we be looking at corner if Trey White were healthy and Dane Jackson were the next guy up? Problem is, we're not there. So we're in a situation where we have to bring somebody on, right, at least to mitigate, because we, we, I don't think we're going to trot out, you know what I'm saying, Dane Jackson and Cam Lewis. Not There's no disrespect to Cam Lewis, but I don't think we're going to do that if we have an opportunity to grab a corner in the first round, right? But if Trey White weren't there, would we do that? It's just those little things I'm, I'm talking about. So, and I had to, I wouldn't convince myself, but I had to like educate myself like, listen, it wouldn't be a bad idea to grab a corner um, in that first round. That is going to be immediate impact off the bat. What muddies the waters is the fact that Trey White is injured. He's going to be coming back. So like how much you invest in a first, a first round corner, especially if, you have Dane Jackson that you really like. So are you willing to put Dane Jackson to sit again behind a guy that you just drafted that you've invested a first round pick in? So now you've got this guy for three, four years. So what do you do with Dane Jackson? Do you move on? From, I mean, it's it's one of those conversations that you got to have. You got to have those conversations, right? So, and that's one thing that I found interesting to see, like, is it a lock that we're going for corner? I don't think it's a lock. I think they'd like Dane Jackson and they may just find another, you know what I'm saying? cap casualty corner and bring them on and go from there don't forget there's still james bradbury out there that the giants aren't going to just outright release because they want something for him so the bills could be going after james bradbury you just never know right when when brandon bean is silent that's when he's doing his work that's when he comes in and starts kind of like okay let me he, he's scheming He's scheming in the back of it. You said you never know, right? We never knew Von Miller was coming through. And on top of that, OJ Howard, you feel me? But here we are. So you just never know with that, right? So it'll be interesting to see what Brandon Bean does 
I was that 25th pick. Corn is corner the way to go. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people will like that. A lot of people figure out ah, we should just go guard because guard is the safest, right? But we just brought back Ryan Bates. So this is where that BPA comes in, right? Uh, Josh says, yeah, <laughs> you're, you're back on that. Um, but I find, I find that super interesting on, on how, how we attack this, this, uh, this draft. And if we should go corner statistics, say, man, you draft a first round corner. Chances are this corner is going to be pretty damn nice. I mean, yes. Are there busts here and there? Of course. But for the 32 best corners that were in that PFF ranking, damn near 90% of them were first rounders. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah.